Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Welcome to the Southern California Prep Insider Baseball Podcast. Tommy and Les here. Les just coming off a two-week marathon of baseball games and tournaments. How are you still awake right now, Les? Hey, lots of caffeine, my man. I mean, <laughs> thank God for Starbucks, right? Uh, yeah, it's great, crazy couple of weeks, uh, over 30 games in 12 days. I think I may have caught a cold along the way, but hey, you know, sure beats sitting in an office staring at a cubicle wall. So, uh, you know, happy to be doing what we're doing. There we go. We'll take it. So we'll start with your top 10, Les, who's on it. All right. Hey, new number one this week, Huntington Beach jumps into the top spot, 16-3 overall. They went 3-1 and one in the Boris last week. Finally lost to a team from SoCal in dramatic fashion. The South Hills walked them off in the first round of the Boris Classic. Uh, Huntington Beach is playing really, really well, man. They're getting some really good contributions from guys that, uh, you know, maybe people don't really know about, but uh, they're getting it done on the mound and at the plate. So Huntington Beach is our new number one. Checking in at number two, new number two this week also is La Mirada. Uh, they jump into the number two spot after going three and one in the Boris Classic last week. Made it to the championship game, lost a tough one to eventual champion Jay Serra in the championship game, two to one. Uh, the big play there was a home run by UCLA commit Michael Surreal of Jay Serra. Not to mention a suicide squeeze play with the bases loaded. You know, typical Brett K there. Love that. Uh, num- number three, uh, Steady Eddie, as I like to call them, Miracosta. Man, they're just rolling along, fifteen and one, four and zero last week. They won the Rigetti Classic, beating a pretty good Foothill team out of Santa Santa Ana. Uh, you know, the Mustangs are just cruising along. Really excited to see them there uh, in a couple of weeks here against their big showdown against Redondo. Uh, it should be for all the marbles in their league, uh, and it's the last league games before they head into playoffs. So, Miracosta in at number three. Number four, Harvard Westlake. They also went 3-1 and one in the Boris Classic last week. Their only loss came to eventual champion Jay Serra. Uh, the Wolverines are getting contributions from, you know, a couple of sophomores. They've had a sophomore right fielder made a diving catch to basically win the game for them against Orange Lutheran. Uh, you know, so they're getting contributions not only from their name guys, but some some up and coming players. So Harvard Westlake checks in at number four. Number five, I get a lot of grief on Twitter about this one. Uh, <laughs> It's our oh, really? Getting grief on Twitter? I've never heard of any, <laughs> never any sort of media. Who do? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Arcadia checks in at number five. You know, they're 14-0, and 0, man. I mean, they just keep winning games. You know, their strength of schedule may not be as good as other teams, but, you know, if you're beating teams up the way that they're beating teams up and you're winning the games that you're supposed to win, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm going to rank you. Uh, and at 14-0, and 0, they do have a win against Etiwanda. They do have a win on the road against Modern Day, even though Modern Day is struggling this year. Uh, you know, hey, they're at 14 and 0. You're you're going to get some votes, uh, and so they they you know they check in at number five. New, new number six is Notre Dame, down from number one last week. Uh, they went two and two last week uh, in the Boris Classic. One name to remember though is Chris Aldridge. He really opened some eyes for Notre Dame in his first game after the 30 day sit out period. Uh, he's a guy that's going to be uh, a pretty highly sought after recruit for them. Number seven, Orange Lutheran. They went three and one in the Boris Classic. They start the brutal Trinity League this week against uh, St. John Bosco with their triple header. Uh, you know, so they check in at number one. Number eight is a newcomer, uh, and that's Jay Sarah. They went four and zero in the Boris Classic last week. They're on an eight game winning streak since losing a double header to Huntington Beach. Uh, they won the South Bracket of the Boris Classic. Uh, and they open Trinity League against Servite this week. Number nine is the aforementioned Servite. They went, <clears throat> excuse me, two and two last week in the National Classic, uh, including a dramatic walk-off win in which Tanner Smith smacked a three-run homer. Uh, you know they open up against uh, Jay Sarah this week in three-game set. And rounding out the top ten is Aliso Niguel, fifteen and four. They went three and one last week in the IMG tournament down in Florida. They returned simply with just proven pitching depth, uh, which should serve them well in the gauntlet that is the uh, South Coast League. And I got to ask you so one I got to ask you one question about the top 10, as I always do. I like to ask a couple of them. Uh, South Hill is not on there. They beat Huntington Beach. They had a pretty good showing uh, last week. How close are they to cracking the top 10? They're close, man. I, I, I'd say they're probably at an 11 or 12. Uh, you know, they did have that win against Huntington Beach. I just need to see them prove it a little bit more, right? Uh, offensively, there are some questions. The pitching, though, has been really, really good. Everybody knows about Brandon Dieter, obviously, an MLB draft prospect. Uh, but it's the other guys 
Uh, you know, they've got a junior lefty that, that dealt uh, really well in the Boris Classic, maybe got squeezed a little bit from what reports I've, I've heard. Uh, but I just need to see them hit a little bit more. And You know, I'm going to give them another week or two in the league play and see where they stand uh, because obviously with three – Trinity League teams in the top 10. Those guys are going to knock each other off. Uh, you know, and then Aliso Miguel may falter in the South Coast League. Uh, so, you know, things will play itself out. I, I think South Hills is pretty close, though. All right, league play just around the corner. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about players last week that had good weeks. I'm going to start with J.D. Benorst, Devin Solis. Had a complete game shutout against Bishop Amat. Dos Pueblos is Isaac Coffey, 7 of 10 with five RBIs his last three games. Centennials, DeAndre Brim, I like stolen bases. I'm just going to, this is an all season so far, not necessarily last week. 22 stolen bases already, only a freshman. Unbelievable to see that um, kind of production out of a kid that young. Uh, San Dimas, Zach Jacobs with a rare relief appearance. And then he started the next day uh, for San Dimas. They won both games. So, hey, you got to use the arms in the tournaments and stuff like that. And Zach Jacobs hanging in there, pitching two days in a row. And then finally, Sam Gomez from Las, Los Altos, excuse me. 20 strikeouts in 13 innings in his last two appearances. Yeah, that Zach Jacobs' performance is pretty impressive. His coach emailed me about that. That's that's really nice. When you're able to close a game out, get a win, and start the next game and get that win, that's pretty darn impressive. I'm going to go all pitching with my players of the week. And I'm going to go with sophomore, sophomore Emilio Morales from La Mirada. Went six innings, eight Ks, two walks, and a win over the aforementioned South Hills. That was in the Boris Classic semifinal. On the season, he's 5-0 and with a 0.00 ERA, 38 strikeouts with only three walks and 30, 30 innings pitched on the season. Let's remember, folks, he's committed to USC as a catcher. That might change pretty soon, obviously. <laughs> Junior Trevor Ernt uh, from Beckman. Uh, I was at this game, and le the lefty, you know, he threw a complete game shutout against Corona Del Mar. Struck out five, allowed three hits on the season. He's 3-0, 22 and two-thirds innings pitched, zero earned runs, one run overall. He's got three saves, 13 hits, 24 strikeouts, and three walks. Uh, so earned really getting it done. He was up to the mid-80s uh, against Corona Del Mar last you could, week. You could say he really earned it. I wouldn't, but you can. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then we talked about Jacobs. I had him down here also. He did win three games in five days. Two of them were in relief, uh, you know. And then he also got the complete game start against Downey. So he's up to seven wins on the season for San Dimas, which in and of itself is impressive. Uh, I don't think he has a loss. So at seven and zero, oh, the junior uh, is really getting it done for um, San Dimas. Yeah, I don't think he's going to keep up that pace. But I mean, amazing first half of the season. Uh, for him, now on to our game picks. We're going to start. This is a little bit different now because we're kind of getting the league play. These teams are going to play each other multiple times a week. So we're going to kind of combine them all into one series victory, if you were, so you call it. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Mission Viejo and El Toro. They have three games this week. Yeah, this one was really tough for me to pick just based on what I've seen of both teams. I saw Mission Viejo three times last week in, in the National Classic. And, uh, you know, they're back in our state in our prep baseball report, California State Top 25. Uh, you know, they won the first matchup against El Toro a few weeks ago. They made the title game of the National Classic, losing to eventual state number one, Valley Christian. Uh, El Toro, they went 2-2 two and two in the Boris Classic. Uh, lucky for them, that doesn't matter, obviously, in league. Chargers pitching is starting to pick up after ace Eric Tolman. Uh, Mission Viejo has a future ace in sophomore Hayden Cody, uh, who really, really turned heads last week. Uh, with one game at Mission Viejo, I'm going to go with the Diablos to win this series this week. I'm going to go El Toro just being like for, for no other reason the fact that Mission Viejo has already beaten them once. kind of tough to keep beating a team over and over and over, just law of averages. I want to give a shout-out to Jay Spillane, too, for Mission Viejo, who threw a perfect game in that National Classic tournament. Uh, always impressive for a perfect game, let alone in a tournament like that where you're playing the best of the best of the best. So uh, good uh, outing last week from Jake. Expect another one this week, but... Again, there's there's only so much momentum you can have before it slowly starts to, to kind of taper down. But we'll see. I, I'll take El Toro, El Toro in this series. Uh, next, we have Santa Fe and Whittier. Two games. Santa Fe is playing really well. They've won seven straight, uh, including some big road wins. Whittier, you know, they've been in a lot of close games. The average margin of victory or loss in their last five games is only two runs. Uh, and that includes a seven-run win also. Uh, senior Alex Banda, uh, he, you know, he's – Proven to be a legitimate bat in the lineup for Whittier. He's hitting 412 on the season. And the Cardinals as a team have five guys hitting over 325. 
For Santa Fe, the Chiefs have seven guys hitting over 320, uh, led by Alfredo Ruiz, batting 383 on the season. But it's the pitching where the Chiefs have the advantage, and because of that, I'm going with Santa Fe to win these two and take the series. I'm also going to go with Santa Fe. By the way, Alfredo Ruiz, a .79 ERA, too. So he's not just getting done to play. He's going to get done on the mound. Next, three games. It's Capistrano Valley in San Clemente. You know, in the preseason, all the stuff all over Twitter was that, you know, Capa Valley was a, was a super team, and, and they were really, really good. And they are really good. They're really talented. Uh, you know, the reality, though, is that they're a good team that's played inconsistently en route to a 12-6 and record. Uh, on the other side, nobody was talking about San Clemente coming into the season, and they're quietly putting together a pretty good season, uh, having won four of the last five. It's about to get real for both of these teams, as each can't afford to lose any games in league, you know, given the way it's shaping up. Uh, San Clemente is five and two at home, uh, and three and one on the road, which is impressive. Capa Valley, meanwhile, is three and one at home, while five and five on the road. I just like the consistency with which San Clemente is playing, so I'm going to go with them to win this series. I'll go the other way. I'm going to go with Capa Valley. Kids are sent out to me. Joey Holman hitting 402 home runs, and then Ryan Doherty on the mound, uh, 32 strikeouts and only 23 innings so far. I think it kind of scared. I San Clemente is going to be good when McGreevy's on the mound. But um, we'll see what happens in the two games. Uh, they got two guys with four home runs. Jeffrey B. I'm not going to try to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep it at Jeffrey B. <laughs> He's got four. Charlie Laos also has four home runs. Uh, so that is uh, the guys to look out for in that little series. Uh, next, we have Harvard Westlake and Chaminade. Three games. Yeah, both teams are in our PBR. California State Top 25 and number five, Harvard Westlake and number 23, Chaminade. Wolverines are loaded on the mound with Sam Laboki and Jack Limongelli, who dealt last week in the Boris Classic. They're also playing in and winning close games, which obviously good teams do. Chaminade is coming in on an eight-game win streak with all, all but one of those coming by six runs or more. Uh, this, however, will be the toughest uh, competition they've faced all season, especially with three games in a week. Uh, I just think that Harbor westlake has the pitching depth to handle this. Uh, whereas Chaminade's pitching depth will be challenged. So I'm going to go with Harvard Westlake to win this series 2-1 to one this week. I agree. I'm going to take Harvard Westlake as well. Finally, Servite, Jay Sarah, three games. We kind of teased it before. What do you think? Another matchup of two state top 25 teams, number 14, Servite. Scuffled a little bit in the National Classic. While number 16, Jay Sarah was lights out in the Boris. Servite's pitching was supposed to be a strength, and it was at times last week, although it was a little inconsistent, but it did keep them in every game. Uh, Jay Sarah was supposed to have little pitching depth, but all of a sudden they're dealing on the mound. The offenses are similar in their approach and style, so I feel it's going to come down to the pitching. Two games are at Servite where the ball tends to fly out. It's supposed to be hot this week, uh, which means that those those two games could be pretty offensive. Jay Sarah is getting contributions from a number of different players, so as a result, I'm going to go with the Lions to win this series. They're just playing really hot right now. I'm going to agree with you. That Boris Classic was no joke. They uh, put a good performance in. Uh, there, that is it. That's all we've got for you this week. Uh, Less anything else I want to add? Now just check us out on prepbaseballreport.com slash California. We just released our state uh, rankings for class of 2019 players. Our top 100 is out. We're doing diamond notes coming up in a couple of days. Our player of the week will be out here this week as well. Just check us out on PBR California, PBR underscore California on Twitter as well. All right, there we go. That is it for this week. We will see you same time next week.